Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. You're joined today by me, Francie, Skyler from Rivian Stories, and Kyle, of course, from Out of Spec as well. So welcome, you all. Thanks for tuning in today. Hey, glad to be here. Glad to have you here, Skyler, and great to meet you. This is our first time meeting, and so far, so good. You have a lot to share today, so excited to dive in specifically you know there's been some news with rivian about the new availability of the dual motor alternative compared to the quad motor which we know and so quick overview of the dual motor we've got one motor on each axle we've got the dual permanent magnets um, the different gear ratio from front to rear the clutch disconnect on the rear axle inside the motor and you know, Rivian claims that that'll just be very seamless. And then also that the front motor uses the silicone carbine and the rear motor will just be silicone. And Kyle has a long, intense, great review of the dual motor video that, um, you know, you can check out on YouTube that goes into detail and uh, really has a lot of that interesting, uh, you know, review on it. And Kyle has a pretty big opinions about which one you think is best, don't you, Kyle, versus dual and quad? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe for different use cases, but the whole reason we're bringing Skyler in is because he's a co-host of one of my favorite podcasts. It's called the Rivian Stories podcast, and you guys do it uh, at least once a week, but occasionally more. We get midweek stuff. We get a fantastic website as well. Um, where there's a whole bunch of Rivian enthusiasts all together. I join in all the time. So yeah, just just awesome to have Skylar here. We've been friends for a long time. He's come up here and shot videos with us. So it's nice to have him back. Yeah, I'm excited to see what you have to share, Skylar, and how it might be similar or different to what Kyle thinks about the, the new Rivian offering. And um, specifically where, you know, there's a lot of people holding reservations for Rivians and these pre-order holders, as Rivian has said, can, they can choose between the three drive systems that are available. So this is uh, the dual motor, um, all wheel drive, the performance dual motor, all wheel drive, and then the quad motor, all wheel drive. But specifically, we're in a spot where those pre-order pre holders have the choice of if they are, you know, waiting for the dual, they can actually pay 500 bucks more and just get the quad motor. So off the bat, how do we feel that about this? You know, pre-order holders are sitting there with this option and it seems like, oh, more for 500 bucks, especially compared to previous pricing. Is it a no brainer or what are people considering? What do y'all think? And maybe even before I asked Skylar about this, I mean, I, I when I posted this review, I didn't know about the pricing side of things. I can look at the website now and know it's a many thousand dollar upgrade to get quad over dual. Um, but Skylar, so many Rivian uh, order holders were like, um, it's actually because you have early pricing, like not that big of a gap to get the dual motor or sorry, to get the quad motor over the dual. And they're like, should we still do that? So can you walk us through roughly this pricing conundrum for a few thousand people that are on this list? Well, and honestly, I think it's more than just a few thousand, Kyle. I mean, I think that there are still a lot of um, pre-order holders out there that are locked into the legacy pricing because they've been on the reservation list for long enough. And, and here's where I, I will start things on the quad versus dual conversation. In my opinion, uh, for the old pricing, I wouldn't even consider the dual motor, me personally. I, I would go quad all the way. I think where it becomes more interesting is when everything is at, let's call it current pricing, and that's where there's more, a more significant delta between the quad motor and the dual. And that's, that's where it becomes more of a decision in my mind. I, I totally agree. I mean, so, you know, let's just forget about the system performance. Let's forget about the drivability and their capabilities. If you just look at the overall cost of ownership of one of these, if you have early pricing where you've locked in maybe a large pack quad motor variant, um, you know, at the original price, and for whatever reason you haven't taken delivery, which there's a lot of people that have not yet taken delivery, especially for R1S, but even for T, um, 
just the resale value on the secondhand market of a quad motor truck is going to be a step above the dual motor vehicles in three or five years from now. And I think you'll more than make up that $500 Delta uh, in between. Yeah, I mean, it boils down to bang for the buck and what you're getting for for that money. And I'm, I'm sure we'll dig into some of the kind of technical, the more nerdy stuff here in a bit, but you you can't beat the quad motor in in my opinion yeah so you're a quad motor fan i would say i'm actually on the other end of the spectrum where quad motor really bugs me in many ways um and francie dropped off for some reason i don't know maybe she'll come back maybe she won't doesn't matter um <laughs> we're we're nerding out and uh but francie actually has driven my truck a quad motor a bunch and so um skylar do you want to give us a quick overview of have you had a dual motor experience yet I I have not. So I have just lived vicariously through your hour and 15 minute, uh, really fairly in depth review. And I, I was so curious to see what your experience was going to be like and what your thoughts were going to be like. And I was honestly a little bit surprised that you seem to lean more towards the dual motor. So I, I look forward to jumping into that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so if you just if it, so my my impression is if you drive the truck around town every day, you're driving to work, you're driving to Starbucks in the morning. And let's just say you never plan on doing any off road driving or any drag racing or anything like that, which I, I honestly think this is the use case for. 60 plus percent of the trucks out there something where it's a a street truck you might take it on dirt to the beach or i don't know something like that then there's no reason in my impression to spend more money to get the quad motor system where you're giving up quite a bit of efficiency you're going to be giving up uh, some nvh and noise uh you know the four motor system's a little bit clunky it's a little bit loud you really hear those motors working very often and let's not forget like out of warranty expenses of course you have four motors four things that could go wrong versus two but interestingly and something i never covered in my video but it was on my list i just forgot to put it in the quad motor has a longer warranty than the dual motor so is that just baked into the upgrade cost where rivian's like hey we're just gonna you know charge more money for it we'll just extend the warranty as part of the upgrade cost that you're putting in why do you think the warranty is different between the two? Well, I I have my own thought about that. And I feel like Rivian coming out of the gates needed to have a robust, a more robust warranty because it's actually better than the standard market warranty. And I feel like that needed to be there until they established themselves and kind of prove themselves that Number one, these are high quality vehicles. Number two, that Rivian is a real and capable company. So I feel like they they might be over that hump. And I'm curious whether it was um, something specific to do with the actual hardware or whether it was just a company decision We've got plenty of demand. We we know we can deliver and we can get away with offering less warranty. Yeah. So I, I think the 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 you know, for those who don't want to listen to a, a two hour long podcast, because you and I can go on for about seven hours easily. Um, the the answer is the quad motor system still is the top system. It's unique. It gives you a, a you know, sort of once in a lifetime driving experience, if you will, to have this four motor control. Um, really cool stuff. I would say it still needs some fine tuning. There are still limitations with the system, but there is just something cool about having 830 horsepower, four motors, and you can show off to your friends. It's got active torque vectoring. It is by far the heavier content system. The reason I lean more towards dual motor for the 99% of Rivian owners is I actually think it's a better system for most people in the sense where 
most driving is done on road. So you have this automatic clutch disconnect on the rear axle, which the quad motor also has a clutch disconnect on the rear axle, but it's not automatic and it's also not active. And so what that means is if you want to get better efficiency out of the quad motor system, you have to go into conserve mode, which halves your total power output, keeps the truck front wheel drive, which does some weird stuff to handling dynamics, especially in the wet when you're trying to accelerate on an on-ramp. Uh, sometimes you can't quite get the power down and you have traction control flashing the whole time. And so, yeah, you can do this in the quad motor, but in the dual motor, it's just automatic there's no setting you have to do it prioritizes front wheel drive under normal cruising and at low speed or under heavy load you have a all-wheel drive truck with a little bit stronger power coming from the back especially in the performance drive unit and i i think that's the that's the sweet spot for most people but i will say the rivian community has surprised me and i think much to uh, my excitement as to how truly into the trucks the rivian community are i mean they know their vehicles they're using their vehicles and so skylar do you think the benefits maybe you can explain to our audience what really are the benefits of the four motor system and what's your prediction on how many owners are actually going to be using those benefits so I'm I'm going to start with the last part of that question. And I know that you said for 99% of potential Rivian buyers out there, you think dual motor is a better option. I, I would actually put that closer to 60%. But I do agree. If you're not going to be pushing any limits of handling on the road or off the road, then dual motor is probably great for you. Now, I think where quad motor really kind of sets itself apart is with regards to torque vectoring on road. And even if you are just in, in the quad motor, if you're in conserve mode, you can still get torque vectoring when you're only running the the front wheels because you do have a motor for each wheel so that should technically even handle a little bit better than front wheel drive only automatic front wheel drive only mode in the dual motor and the the other thing that i will say about my experience in conserve mode even in the quad motor where theoretically you do have more control is I don't like the handling when it's in front wheel drive only mode. And I would not want that to happen automatically. Yeah, so I, 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 this is why I really want you to drive the system because I don't think the automatic disconnect function will ever let you get into a situation where it feels front wheel drive. I think anytime you go hard throttle, big corner, any type of wheel slip even before you get to the point of a wheel slip it's going to have that rear motor engaged right there on the spot and it's going to provide the ultimate power on the back one thing that's interesting though is if i guess rivian looked at like the percentage of use cases of their vehicles and at what point in time they expect the clutch to be open and to be running front wheel drive uh they, they basically tuned the system so that you know, they, they even changed the inverter so that the front wheel drive unit is a higher quality silicon carbide uh, inverter with the power rectifiers in there versus just a silicon MOSFET in the back. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. So you have IGBTs and MOSFETs and they choose different front and rear based off of the projected use case of each motor, you know, based off their efficiency. So it's like Rivian expects the trucks to be front wheel drive most of the time. And then I was talking to them, if you don't have a silicon carbide inverter, like your efficiency is way down, as an example, under normal cruising. But they were also saying when you are under load, when you're towing, when you're driving hard, the benefits of silicon carbide kind of go away. And Francie's back. And so hey, that's yeah. why the rear motor, which is designed to be used under heavy use, isn't silicon carbide because the benefits would be minimized. I thought that was pretty fascinating. And um, yeah, so I, I think Skylar, it's like, yes, people want to have 
the four motor system. It's so cool. Um, but maybe one thing we haven't pointed out so far, like what are the drawbacks of the four motor system in comparison to the dual motor system? And the one situation I always come back to is something called stall torque. And it's when you are on a steep uphill grade, you got three wheels with no traction and you got one opportunity for the truck to get power to one tire to get you up and over an obstacle. And this is a really rare use case, except if you're sort of in our Colorado, rocky, dirty, muddy, snowy, sometimes trails where we have one tire that needs to work. And with the four motor system, I find that even if I go to full maximum power application, it can't go from zero to one RPM to get me up and over. And talking to the Rivian engineers about this, they're like, yeah, we know we, we really suffer getting, you know, a one motor worst case scenario just to start spinning. Once you get it starting to move, it can go. Um, but they're like, we, this is a limitation of the system. They recognize it, which is pretty interesting. You'll also hear the fans kick on in the truck when you do stuff like this because it's spiking heat into the inverters. And the benefit of the dual motor system in this particular case, even though there's no physical locking differential, which I want to talk to you about in a moment, they're able to clamp down physical brakes on, the, on that particular axle on the tire that's spinning and transfer, in theory, the excess torque to the tire that needs to get up and over an obstacle. So now you have, let's say, maybe not twice the torque because you're losing some into that brake, but let's say 50% more power you can now apply even at wide open to get the truck over an obstacle. So the ability to shift extra power by way of having an open differential where you're essentially locking it through a brake system allows more power to one wheel than the four motor system has. Now I know that's super nerdy and like a very weird use case, but what's your impression of this? Yeah, well, so I understand that, right? Because if you're using one motor to spin two tires, one of which doesn't have traction, that motor is already spinning. And with, and, and granted, I'm not an electric motor expert, but I will tell you and things like, when you're looking at a house and um, electricity draws to start up something like an AC compressor or a well pump, like I have a well, right? You look at locked rotor amps and to get a motor started takes a lot more juice than once it started to make it run faster. So, I mean, it, it all makes sense. And I will tell you that in a lot of off-road situations, and it, it doesn't matter what type of machine you're in, having a little bit of momentum, if you're going to run into situations like that is, is critical. So I feel like driving in the right way can overcome that in, in a lot of scenarios, but I, I do understand how theoretically the dual motor could be a bit better at that um it's like a unique case because then the quad motor is so much better in like a sandy environment where you can torque vector and slide it around or you know even if you're rock crawling and moving where you may have the ability to use some momentum because the trails might be slightly smoother because then you can just get individual control on each tire and at least through my ownership experience and i'm sure through yours as well like the software improvements of driveline control have been amazing to watch how they've changed everything. Um, so, so like, but don't you think if they just put a locker on just the rear axle of the dual motor system, that would be the superior off-road system at that point? I, I love mechanical lockers and like all, all of my Jeeps have mechanical lockers, both front and rear. And I, I will give you a scenario though, where I feel like the quad motor system is significantly better off-road. And I mean, you gave one great example and that's sand or any type of, of loose surface. But when I was up in Colorado earlier this summer, I did a very, very steep climb that was all loose rock um, in my quad motor Rivian. And I would not have done that in in my jeeps with limited slip and or lockers because 
it it was super sketchy i mean it's something that i'm guessing probably only like lighter vehicles like utvs do i bet rivian is one of the only full-size vehicles that could have done something like that and quad motor rivian specifically so yeah so i i think it comes down to okay if you're gonna go off road in my impression if i was to buy one for myself again I would go quad motor because I think it's cool. And I can live with some of the limitations of the system in these very unique situations where maybe a dual motor system would be better. In my impression, the perfect system is actually just update the quad motor. So maybe a little bit of background. The quad motor system that's in the trucks today is a Bosch sourced unit. It has a Rivian inverter and Rivian control logic but it's a hodgepodge of Bosch and Rivian. It has a water jacket cooling on the outside, but no oil cooling on the inside. So its thermal capabilities are very limited. If you're gonna go out and do drifting or slide around, you really only get a small amount of time before the truck puts you into turtle mode. It has okay cooling uh, for towing and any sort of normal daily use case. I've never really had an issue with something like that. But when you really do extreme stuff with it, the limitations are certainly there. So the dual motor system, talking just to the Rivian engineers, because I haven't done any back-to-back -back testing, they were saying, you can romp on the dual motor system all you want. And they're like, we will, yes, you can derate it, but it's going to be such a much more thermal longevity drivetrain than the quad motor system. And uh, I was like, wow, that's pretty fascinating. So you have you know, in a sense, uh, two different generations of drive unit here within Rivian. You have a completely in-house designed, optimized for this type of situation, dual motor system. And then you have sort of this hodgepodge, old school electric motor, if you will. It's still really cool technology, but it's not bleeding edge or that well optimized, set up in a much cooler way. So I was like, why don't you just make a quad motor with your new motors? Yes. And they were like, yes that's what we're doing next and i'm like right. hell yeah thank you <laughs> that's that's what i'm waiting for and matter of fact one thing that would have tipped the scales for me kind of much more into the dual motor camp and it's something that rj said a good while ago but originally the plan with the dual motor components the enduro units that are rivian designed and manufactured was for those to be higher voltage so 800 plus voltage and that to me is a big deal and i know it's something that you've talked a lot about and especially with all the charging testing and everything else that you guys do but the the move to higher voltage is something that i would have loved to have seen in this generation of rivian and it's something that i i can't wait until they do it yeah and i think we should actually do another podcast so stay tuned viewers because i want to talk about the new max pack and to be like is that actually worth it and i had a chance to talk to the engineers of max pack and figure out what they did differently so i have a really good picture on what's going on there um but i think maybe to sum it up for the dual motor conversation the the the, the quick answer here is there's pros and cons to both systems regardless of that the quad motor system even if it does have certain efficiency drawbacks and nvh drawbacks and some other tiny little things the coolness of the four motor system the extra power you get from the quad motor system excuse me that is going to be the top system and it still is the top system so if it's only 500 dollars for you to upgrade or a couple grand go for the quad motor system why not it's cool and like, if you decide you hate it, which no one's going to because it's still an, an incredible vehicle, um, you can sell it and you will not really lose much money on your Rivian, at least in today's market. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world. However, if you are a general driver who wants to do some off-roading, truly the dual motor system can still do way more off-road than what most owners have done previously. I'm not saying everyone, there's a lot of Rubicon owners and things like this who are used to, you know, going mud bogging or on hardcore trails. The dual motor system can still get you way the heck out on the trail. And in some cases, 
even do better than the quad motor system and i think actually gives you a better sense of security because you can hear it when it's doing uh, you know uh, cross car torque management grabs brakes you hear the abs pump pumping you're like okay things are working um, but then the quad motor system is just seamless momentum. You don't hear any clicks. You don't hear any pumps going. It just glides over. Um, so I, my recommendation for most people is go dual motor performance. I, I think, you know, fast enough, they feel very similar off the line, truly, especially if you get the trucks all the way in lowest suspension, because they only give you full power if you're in lowest suspension. Um, I actually bet the power is almost identical in standard ride height between the two. Uh, it would be interesting to do a drag race in standard ride height, dual versus quad. I think you really only get the unlocked power when you drop the truck, which is very rare for Rivian owners to be driving around slammed in sport mode. So dual motor is my recommendation. If, if you're going to have to spend up to it at new pricing, I think uh, for most people, you're going to be able to get anywhere you want. Uh, quad motor, if it's only 500 bucks, yeah, cool. Go for it. It's pretty neat. Skylar, what's your impression? Yeah, no, I, I agree. For most people, dual motor is probably better. I would say the the people that should opt for quad motor are the ones that want to drive these things fast uh, through turns on road. So the the quad motor torque vectoring on road is a big deal i feel like for a lot of off-road scenarios or or maybe even most of them quad motor is also going to be superior the the other thing that people should know is with quad motor you get things like rally mode and drift mode and soft sand mode and some things that do not exist in the dual motor variants but you also mentioned something that I want to emphasize as well. And granted, this is this is Skylar speaking. But if I was to go to a dual motor variant, it would absolutely be the performance variant that has the sport mode that will actually not automatically disengage the the rear motor. Yeah, so in towing mode and in sport mode, and I don't know if there's a snow mode, I think there is, it keeps the trucks completely locked up. I, I think you're going to be really impressed with the clutch disconnect and reconnect, but I also didn't spend enough time with it in daily living to know if it's going to be just noticeable enough when it happens to where it gets annoying every time I, it, it disconnects and reconnects. I'm not sure. I, I know. I really want to spend a day, at least a day, a day or two in one of these dual motors and drive it around and put it in different scenarios. Because until I can do that, I can't I, I can only give kind of hypothetical um, advice. But, yeah, I'd love to be able to give people, hey, this is what I saw, what I experienced, what I felt that I, I feel like that that would be valuable yeah my impression driving it on the test track was even if i wasn't looking for it i feel like i'm in tune enough with the vehicles i'm driving to be thinking about oh did it just reconnect and i feel like yeah. that is just one less one more thing that takes my mind off of the seamless experience of driving an ev that i just like to not have to think about the car and so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. But again, if you're going to spend many thousands of dollars for such a small percentage of use case, you'll find the benefits of the quad motor. Again, even fast road driving, Skylar, yeah, the torque vectoring is amazing, but you'll be able to drive faster for longer with the dual motor system over the quad motor without it overheating. So it's like, do you want short bursts of better driveline control or still pretty good driveline control with longer duration like if you're going to go out and do laps on a track the the dual motor seems better what do you think i i i don't know i mean the way that i drive fast i don't do it for you know a, a, a really long time and i do that on regular roads right i mean cur curvy mountain type roads are, are probably the best and i i do it in spurts i don't do it in a sustained way so i don't know yeah but, but that's all, all great questions right 
Yeah, it's it's so hard because I think it's easier to make a suggestion when we know exactly how the truck's going to be used for. So maybe like Rivian stories, we can work on a on a buying guide where you like answer a few set of questions. And then at the end, it suggests which drivetrain, you know, is sounds like the most appropriate choice to go with factoring in the additional cost of going with a quad motor. Because I think if it was no charge, everyone would just go quad motor because it's cool. Uh, but once you start throwing in, you know, a few thousand dollars for this upgrade, well, these are all the things you have to think about. And certainly there are benefits to the lower price system, which makes it all that much harder. So that gain of efficiency and that gain of noise or the reduction of noise and, um, you know, th those are two really nice things. And so I think, I, I, Skylar, I'm sure you can agree with me. The perfect system is quad motor with the new enduro drive units and then give us a mechanical locker as an additional option if it's appropriate. And I don't know how they would do that, but I think it would be amazing. Well, I, I agree. And honestly, I don't think it would be that hard in the quad motor architecture that, that they have right now because there's a single gearbox, front and rear. And granted, the, the gear sets are separate, right? But there's got to be a way within that existing gearbox to lock it up, right? It Do would it. be the dream. The dream is get all of the, the efficiency benefits of the new enduro units, plus all of the performance benefits in a four motor system. And um, and then, yeah, just, just a locker. There's so many interesting, weird scenarios where, yeah, like four motors cool, but you still have to let software figure some stuff out occasionally. And it's better in some cases, like you had mentioned. And I totally have found those cases with my truck. And I'm like, this is insane. And then there's other situations where I'm like, holy crap, I'm two inches from a cliff. Half the truck's on ice. Half of it's on mud. I just want a locker so I know when I put my foot down, at least some wheels are getting the power appropriate. So it's been, uh, it would that would be the dream system. Or, or some sort of stall type component, right? If it's really tough to get that motor going, and I mean, so you, you just need to give it a little bit of a head start. That, that might honestly make more sense than a locker. Certainly, yeah. Maybe put a little drivetrain slop in there or something, like a little clutch dump. Uh, I don't know yeah. how they would do it, but it could be an interesting... Like if they have a clutch disconnect, you could spin the motor a little bit and just abuse load, shock load it, and spin the tire just to get it moving. Yeah, I mean, when you need to, and if you if you did it in an intelligent design way, make that a something that wouldn't be terrible to service if you needed to, right? I mean, there's there's all kinds of cool and interesting solutions and ways that, honestly, they need to talk to guys like us more often, I feel like. Yeah, it was fascinating hanging out with um, their their powertrain team because, um, you know, I, I brought in some of the experiences that you've shared with me as well as some of our own that we've had with our truck. And they were like, oh, yeah, OK, so like and like I would I was able I had the truck with the powertrain team. So I was able to get it in a situation and show them what I was talking about, which all made it into this this video, which I thought was so great to get their real time feedback. And then afterwards, they were plugging laptops in data logging everything off the truck after my drive and analyzing it. And I honestly hadn't heard from them since since I left there. But I thought it was a, a really cool how open to feedback they were. And if anything, they should host these events more often. And, uh, you know, get more feedback, get more data. And um, yeah, so I hope that provides a little bit of clarity to the uh, potential purchaser of a Rivian, which is if you're not worried about the cost, spec the quad motor, no one's going to be disappointed. If you really care about maximum efficiency or saving a little bit of money, and I think honestly, having the better system for daily driving, go dual motor. Yeah, it sounds like the quad motors you know, just from what y'all have said, it's totally up to the driver, what kind of driving they're going to be doing. Maybe there's a fun quiz online where you can input your favorite kind of things, what you're looking for in the car. But those folks who are waiting in limbo with their reservations for Rivian, wondering if they need to, you know, switch up to the quad motor, it might not be that big of a deal unless they're, you know, really taking it out and putting themselves into the situations that y'all reference. But it seems like they they won't really lose out no matter what. It just might be maybe less of a preference if they didn't really think about it. But and actually, way, Francis, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Skylar, wasn't it the case where you, 
maybe they were talking about they had to spend five hundred dollars to get dual motor like it was more money to upgrade to a dual motor i i can't possible? remember but i i do know that yeah it's like a 500 hundred dollar price difference and yeah. It, it, it yeah it might be 500 dollars more or 500 dollars less but still i i would just go back to if that's the case don't think twice go quad motor totally uh, just because it's more bang for the buck yep 100 percent agree and uh, that's that's the moral of the story. It took us 35 minutes to get there, which is pretty <laughs> quick for us. That's pretty fast. <laughs> so that's Not that's bad. awesome. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks y'all for coming online. Hopefully, we gave the viewers a bit of insight. If you know there are questions online, you know people are asking online, should I just get the quad? Um, hopefully, this gives you more information about it. Of course, consider what kind of you know things you want out of your car. If you're just that daily driver, sounds like the dual might be more for you, but. If you want to get a bit more intense with things, perhaps the quad, of course, considering your budget as well. But thanks so much, Skylar, for coming on. We hope to have you back again, you know, like Kyle was saying. So keep tuning in, audience. Skylar, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you back the next time at the Out of Spec podcast. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.